Today, South Africa's savannas are home to a vast array of mammals. From giant elephants to agile gazelles and to terrible predators like lions and hyenas. But around 260 million years ago, South Africa was vastly different and formed part of the famous supercontinent Pangaea. Long before today's mammals and even before the dinosaurs started to roam the earth, these regions were home to bizarre creatures. In this strange world, where large animals weren't dinosaurs but synapsids, a strange predator stood out. With its reptilian looks, mixed in with some more strangely familiar traits, this carnivore leaves us humans who can study it thanks to its fossilized remains, confused and slightly perplexed. We're talking about Antiosaurus, the fearsome dinosaurian synapsid who is the protagonist of this episode of Paleo Profile. The first remains of Antiosaurus were recovered in 1921 from the Karoo Basin in South Africa by the British paleontologist David Meredith C.S. Watson. The digs were made in an area corresponding to the geologic formation of Abraham's Kraal. This formation is included in a larger section called the Bufo Group, a complex that also includes other formations from the Karoo Basin. The remains of Antiosaurus tell us the story of a really bizarre animal. This taxon had an estimated length of a whopping 5 to 6 meters. This makes it one of the largest non mammalian synapsid predators. Though this isn't the most interesting fact that its remains tell us, its strangest attribute was surely its head. Its eyes were placed frontally, giving it binocular vision. Today, many predators like lions, owls and humans possess this type of vision. The frontal position of the eyes enables the field of view from both eyes to overlap, thus creating a single three-dimensional image, thus enabling depth perception useful for finding prey. This characteristic was surely used by this large predator when it hunted. The frontal position of the eyes, together with its peculiar head shape, gave Antisaurus the look of a baboon from hell. The presence of larger bone growths around the eyes contributed even more to the hellish look of its head. These growths were maybe used in intraspecific fights between males, possibly during the mating season. We can imagine these headbutting fights as being extremely violent. A study conducted on an immature specimen revealed that during growth, this species was affected by strong development of the temporal region, that is the area where the muscles that control the mandible attached. This shows a structural change similar to that found in other dinosaurians, such as Cyodon and Titanophonius. At first glance, Antiosaurus might resemble some kind of reptile, but appearances can be deceiving. This animal had nothing to do with reptiles. In fact, the synapsids, to which our peculiar friends belongs to, are a crate of amniotes completely separate from reptiles. The famous Dimetrodon belongs to this group. Today, synapsids include the mammals, which are in fact the last surviving lineage of this ancient group. Specifically, Antiosaurus and mammals belong to a group of synapsids called the Therapsids. In the Therapsids though, Antiosaurus belongs to the Dinosophalians. The Dinosophalians are a diverse group that contains both heavy snouted predators and bizarrely adorned herbivores with extravagant horns. In South Africa 260 million years ago, Antiosaurus lived with many other dinosaurians. The Abraham Skrull formation from which Antiosaurus was recovered contains particular rocks, useful for reconstructing the ancient ecosystem in which this animal lived. These rocks in fact tell us the story of a very specific habitat. When Africa was still long to the side of Pangaea, the area of South Africa corresponding to the Karoo Basin was further south than today. The ancient basin was interspersed with various rivers that formed a vast floodplain. Their flow slowly formed the sedimentary rocks, including pelites, siltstone and sandstone, that we observe over the entire formation. These rivers flowed from south to north from the Gondwanan Mountains that once formed an arch mountain chain. They started from the Rio de la Plata Croton, located between Uruguay, East Argentina and Southern Brazil, 
and ended in the southern portion of South Africa. In this temperate environment, Antisaurus lived alongside many other synapsids and reptiles. Other than various dinocephalians like Tapinocephalus and Joncaria, it shared its habitat with other therapsid species, including small lysinodonts, therocephalians, and modestly sized gorgonopsids. The synapsids weren't the only large animals in this ecosystem, though. There were herbivorous reptiles like parisaurs, which possessed a thick dermal armor. These latter probably constituted the favorite prey of Antisaurus, alongside with the dinocephalian herbivores of the area. In the past, it was believed that Antisaurus spent most of its time in the water, surprising its prey from the edge of a river, in a similar fashion to today's crocodiles. This hypothesis was raised following a study on the structure of the limbs. The results, in fact, led researchers to believe that the animal wasn't able to support its weight efficiently on land. A posture similar to that of crocodiles was thus proposed. In a recent article, a study on various tetrapods from the Peru basin to determine their lifestyle was cited. Analyzing the stable oxygen isotope concentration on the inside of the phosphates originating from the bones and the teeth, they were able to determine their dependence on aquatic environments. The study revealed how the concentration of these isotopes from remains belonging to parisaurs, pterocephalians and dinocephalians like Antiosaurus are similar to those found in modern land animals. So Antiosaurus was probably terrestrial. Even though the lower values of the isotope concentration indicate a possible affinity with a watery environment. So despite the fact that Antiosaurus spent part of the time in the water, it was without a doubt a predator that hunted on dry land, due to the fact that its prey was fully terrestrial. This animal thus had a similar lifestyle to a jaguar or a bear. Despite what was previously believed, Antisaurus's legs were fully adapted to hold its weight on land. Despite the fact that the front legs had a sprawling posture, this dinocephalian possessed limbs adapted to terrestrial locomotion. In fact, like all therapsids, its back legs were positioned directly below the body, just like in mammals. The adaptation that allows the back legs of therapsids and mammals to assume this position lies in the head of the femur. In fact, the part of the femur that fits in the hip possesses a downward bended profile that guarantees an obligate erect posture. Other than this, another indication of an efficient locomotion land is the position of the hands. They were oriented towards the front, unlike reptiles whose hands always point outwards from the body. The jaws of this predator were distinguished by their heterodontin titian. That is, it possessed teeth of various shapes and sizes. It possessed incisors and canines in the front part of the mouth, and molar-shaped teeth in the back of the mouth. Today, all the existing therapsids, that is mammals, are warm-blooded, or better, they are endothermic and homothermic. That is, they are able to regulate and maintain their body heat, independently from the outside temperature, producing heat from inside the body. It has been shown that despite having erect back legs and a heterodontin titian, this ancient therapsid wasn't completely endothermic. Antisaurus thus possessed a metabolism that was halfway between that of a cold-blooded and a warm-blooded animal, not being able to maintain a constant body temperature like modern mammals. So, even though it was capable of producing part of its body heat using its own metabolism, this predator probably needed to busk in the sun to obtain the extra energy needed during the day. Antisaurus, despite its vaguely reptilian looks, was much closer to us mammals than to dinosaurs and was one of the largest predators of its time, long before the conquest of the land by true reptiles. In this paleo profile, we have taken a journey back to the Permian, walking alongside one of the dominant creatures of this period, to find out how South Africa was vastly different from today, 260 million years ago. And we have discovered a remote time, unknown to the vast majority of people, a time in which bizarre creatures related to modern mammals dominated the earth before the great Mesozoic reptiles. Great, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please press like. If you want to sustain us and our work, subscribe and press the bell icon 
so you don't miss any of our videos. A special thanks to Tiziano Lolli, Antonio Mihaila, and Ivan Ofrida. Today's video has been approved by Lambiosaurus Lambe.